goodbye Max shit. Uh, oh shit, is that is that all of Max shit that I had? Yeah, looks like okay. That that's a good good wrap up. I was really hoping that I had more garbage to throw in so that I could keep the reference going, but alas, here we are. A wild cell has appeared and. We're back in the game that was made by a current neo-Nazi who may or may not have been a neo-Nazi before he decided to open his stupid mouth and, you know, start spouting some very racially uh, racially charged uh, ideas. And it's really, I find that kind of thing very interesting because it's like, like, both him and PewDiePie have, uh, have, bitched and complained about YouTube, like, just, like, have complained about just various liberal or leftist ideals, despite them both coming from Sweden. Sweden, one of the most progressively so, uh, social countries in the world. And it makes me wonder, because at this point, I, I mean, obviously Notch is a billionaire, and, uh, PewDiePie, I think, is a multi-millionaire, and I'm beginning to wonder if it's, like, that outside influence that sort of pushes their mindset away from, you know, the traditional uh, the Swedish, like, pseudo-socialist roots. I don't know. It's been something that's been on my mind since I sort of connected those dots. And am I saying that I have any proof of that? Of course not. But, you know... That's just me thinking, thinking to myself. That's what this series is about. Are those, those flowers, did they upgrade the, the flower model? What is that? I, I don't remember seeing these kinds of plants before. Uh, what is that? What is it? R uh, rose bush. Okay. Huh. That's nif nifty. Nifty. Herdigers. Uh, bork, bork, bork. Speaking of of Sweden. <laughs> uh, uh, apparently Swedish, uh, Swedish chef is looked on, uh, uh, is, gosh dang it, that's gonna show up in, in the video. I hope, oh god, my, I, I have my girlfriend connected to the account and it's just like, no, I don't want, I don't want her, uh, oh, wait, huh? Where am I? Where? Well, I mean, while I'm here, I might as well pick up some sandstone. Oh, okay. All right, get out of the way, please. Thank you. But no, it's it's an interesting concept, the idea but behind... Uh, oh, oh, wait, no, I was talking about... Oh, my God, I'm already getting sidetracked. I am so sorry. I just had... I, my family just had a meal together, and, we're, and my dad made this, like, this... Like pseudo fried, uh, I'm not gonna say fried chicken. It's more like breaded chicken, that's like uh, Pakistani style. So it's uh, it it has it, it's sort of like just regular breaded chicken, except it's got like some Pakistani herbs to it. And ah, this was the place that I that I left off last time. I remember this place well. Um, oh, excuse me, and. It's, it's gross because he uses this particular fucking, this particular, uh, I mean, it, it's good, it was, the, the chicken was good, don't get me wrong, but he uses this one ingredient that, like, me and my, and my white mom just can't stand, and that's tikka masala, or, or, no, no, gema, uh, gema masala? Something masala, and masala translates to spice, so, it's awfully specific which one that is. I'm pretty sure it's garam masala. Um but no, we can't we can't stand it, but he loves the stuff. So he'll he'll just pour it on in. And let me describe some garam masala to you. It's uh it's essentially this sort of I'm going to say it's a a very it's it's sort of like cinnamon except it's not quite except it's a lot richer as opposed to sweet. Like, combine the tastes of cinnamon and black pepper, and I think that that will pretty much give you a good, like, a good, 
imaginary palate for what it tastes like. It's not the best thing in the world. But, you know, a little bit, a little bit can improve a, a fucking dish. But he just cakes, cakes everything in garam masala. And it's, it, it's too much, it's too much. Too much gyra, too much sala. And it, it's really interesting because when I found out about garam masala and tikka masala, like, I, masala translates to sauce, I, not sauce, but a uh, fucking um, spice. And I, I, I've noticed that and I'm just wondering, like, because it has masala in it, and I, the, the term masala reminds me of Allah, which of course translates to God. So I was wondering, like, maybe, like, there's some kind of uh, relation between spice and God, according to uh, Urdu and Hindi Urdu, but, uh, or, or rather Punjab Urdu and Hindi Urdu. But as far as my dad and my grandma have said, they're like, nah, nah, but that's cool that you pointed that out. And I was like, okay, yeah, all right. That's, that's, it's a, it's a connection, but it, it's not really an imaginary connection. I need a connector for this USB driver. And my mom, to go along with it, was, uh, I, she made this really good, uh, rice like <laughs> yeah she just made plain white rice um no she she added like they're sort of like mug not mugu gai pan but you know those like noodles that are occasionally dried out that get mixed in with salad there's they're a darker brown than your average noodle and they're more like bread they're like little curly dark bread Sticks and they aren't and they aren't pretzels at all, but I, I I can't describe them. I can only describe them as like the dot, dry brown noodle, and it 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 gives the the um the rice a bit of I don't know a, a bit of natural sweetness to it. Ooh, and why am I saying ooh? This isn't anything special, but I like clearing it out. Um. Like, okay, so the reason why I like clearing this stuff out is because I imagine, like, I, I'm not sure if I ever to told uh, anybody or mentioned it on this channel before, but essentially when I go into Minecraft, like the way I play, for the most part, I imagine that I'm some kind of, like, literal survivalist, where I'm just, like, gathering everything, putting it all into a big pile and trying to discover, like, whatever I can, and then just sort of follow my instincts there. So that's why I, that's why a guilty pleasure of mine is collecting worthless junk, like a whole bunch of wood that doesn't really do anything. Because it's like, who put this wood here? These tracks. Ooh. I'm not sure what these tracks do, but I'm gonna take them anyway because they might be magical. Ah, uh, and yeah, no, I. It, it was overall a great dinner. It's just I don't know. I, I don't like garam masala, but I like the chicken that he made though. It was good, good ass chicken. And you know, I've I've been starting to. Been I, I've been starting to feel a bit guilty over my meat eating, and you know it's just like a lot of people will just turn a blind eye to it who aren't you know strictly vegetarian. Me, I have the vegetarian guilt, even though I'm not a vegetarian. It's like, yeah, they they fucking got to me, and it and you know what? They're, they're you know that their battle isn't a bad one. By all means, it's actually quite a, uh, it, it's, it's quite, uh, uh, um, it, it's laced with good intention, by all means. But, honestly, like, I just can accept that meat-eating is simply, like, a hump that I can't get over. Because it's like, once you get to a certain, like, class, then you can start taking 
uh, vegetarianism seriously, like it, incorporating it into your life. But it's like, if you like can't like can't fend for yourself or are low or lower uh, as far uh, on the monetary scale, then it's like you've sort of just got to roll with the punches. It's like if you find cheap meat at a store, you should probably get it. If if you can get it, you should probably get it because you don't know when it's gonna be like that again. Like it, it's it's another opium uh, of the masses, and for the most part, it. I mean, obviously, it works really well, but I I think that there is a bit of cl of class welfare that needs to be had before we fully adapt to the ideology of vegetarianism. And even then, like, I don't think we'll actually attain a full vegetarianism as a society, even in a millennium, because because uh, at this point we have uh, we have the technology to create synthetic meat and I mean technically that that is that does apply to the standards of the vegetarian because no animal no real animal with pain receptors or a brain or what we perceive to be a soul has been harmed in the process of making it. And to me, that's what really excites me about the future. The aspect of, come on, thank you, uh, is the aspect of, you know, the synthetic meats. It's like, how far can we go with this technology? Like, I, I, it's like, do, and, you know, that brings up another good argument as to, like, where do we go first? Do we go into the realm of synthetic limb replacement, or do we go into the synthetic meat department? And, you know, uh, I mean, of course we can intercept both at some point, but I'm talking about which, which trail do we pave first. And honestly, I'm going to suggest the uh, artificial limbs. And the reason why, and... You know, you're more than welcome to disagree with me. I, I mean, I can see plenty of reasons why, foremost being that it's like, the reason why I make that claim, that preference, is because I value human lives uh, substantially higher than human. Uh, than, than animals, excuse me. And so I sincerely think that that should be the primary step that we should go towards improving the lives of those who have ultimately like been in some unfortunate accident or or otherwise i think we should improve those people's lives and create a proper stable world for humans before we start uh adamantly seeking a animal rights for animals that really don't have the intellect to I, or the sociability to have I, to sort of be a pet to individuals, and I know I know there are some exceptions, but for the mo I, and some aspects of uh, of animals that are even bred as um, as livestock, like they I, some of them end up uh, end up showing some so. As, some social tendencies and, and that's why some people keep them as pets but those are in the very narrow margin also i'm wondering how the hell that happens how something goes from livestock to being uh to being a social creature i mean like you've got fucking cows and don't get me wrong they're fucking cute but they're they are the things that i will just like I, oh Jesus! What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm talking. Speaking of killing animals, um. Anywho. Oh wow! Another one. Where are you fuckers coming from? Jesus! Another one. Another two. Another three. Alright, shit. 
Oh wait, no. There's just a two. It's fine. Is that the last of you? Please, God. I'm hearing some more, which is a problem. Come here, you sons of bitches. Oh, yeah, 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 there you are. Come at me, fucker. No? Oh, okay. Huh. So I'm hearing them. Uh, and they're making me nervous. And yeah, I am going after them. Because fuck them. They scared the shit out of me. What a bunch of jerks. I'm, talk I'm talking about animal rights. Hey, y'all decided to be jerks about it. And, like, just say, hey, animal rights, my ass. And come at me. Like, read me that they were coming at me like I'm a goddamn bourgeois. Which to them I am, but, you know, like, that, I, I hate to say it. I hate going there, but that's the rules of nature. Da -da 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 -da. And, you know, of course, we as humans should be, should ultimately strive to be above the law of nature. Now, uh, the conservative libertarians may disagree with that. I mean, of course they do. They, they love that survival of the fittest bullshit. Because they have never been an actual survival of the fittest. Nor do they realize that there is any such thing as systematic bias or any form of systematic, uh... Uh, socio-political issues at all. This is, and, and, you know, that's why I, I've probably said this on this series before, because this is where I'm just like, where I go into full politics mode. I, I'm getting closer. Come on. Where, what's that? Where are you? Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. It's like I can... Hmm. Oh, I'm getting close. Come here. Where are you? Ah! Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> I immediately regret my decisions. Wow, how many fuckers are there? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where's my sword? There's my sword. All right, run. Run a ways. Run a safe distance. Okay, I might be able to get him on the stairs. Stand back! No! Stay back! You animals! Freaks! What are you even? What are you? What are you? Alright, 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 alright. Let's go, 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 Man, you guys are good at fucking tailing. Alright, you sons of bitches. I know there was more of you. There you are. Yeah, yeah, you're not- I'm not stuck in here with you! You're stuck in here with me! Son of a bitch! Your mother was a fucking rock! What in God's name are those things? They look like porcupines, but they're not porcupines or hedgehogs. Is there one still alive in here, huh? Huh? Who wants it? Who wants to who wants to interrupt me again, huh? Ah. 
No, no, I'm gonna take care of this. I'm gonna take care of. This. They, they, they fucking pissed me off, man. Where are you, sneaky sly sons? Of well, you know they led me to some uh, some blue blue shit. That's cool. I like that. At least they did something for me. Well, I'm, well, I'm still kind of anxious. I'm still still nervous. Come on. It, it, I don't think they spawn in these particular rocks. Do they? Like, seriously, I have no idea what these things are or how they work. They sound all around me. All around me are hissing assholes. Something assholes. Fucking assholes. I'm, I, well, you know, hey, they made me find some more rubies, so that's neat. Or, or whatever, not rubies. I don't think they, they'd be hiding in the doit. And nothing any... Oh! Hmm. Doing me a heckin' concern, friend. Man, I was having an intellectual discussion with myself. Y'all just had to open your goddamn hissy ass mouths. Hiss. Like a bunch of punk ass bitches. And there's no way for me to tell when I'm near one. All I know is that I want them out of my god. Dang, heckin' cave system. This is my house, not God protected. Anywho, I've been watching, uh, I, <laughs> they still bug me. I'm still hearing the hissing and it's getting, it's getting, it's crawling in my skin. Those wounds, they will not heal. Oh, more lapis lazuli. That's cool. I'm gonna take a drink of my water. Forgive me. For giving this, please. Ah, uh, there we go. I had a Coke, but I finished it before I started recording. Uh, I've been watching classic Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm pretty sure I said that. I hope I did, because when I was a kid, I used to always get it backwards. I used to call them Teenage Mutant Ninja Teenage Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles TMNT yeah yeah that's what I said that's what I used to say Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja oh no I keep confusing the N and the M when are they teenage uh, no when are they mutant and when are they ninja but the mutant co comes first I've got to remember that somehow if you guys got any tips about that shit, let me know. Because I could sure use some help. I need somebody. Not just anybody. Man, old Beatles were good. And new Beatles were good. Revolution 9 was bad. It was real bad. And I'll never stop shouting up about it. It's like, Yoko Ono was the worst! How... I Oh, you get, you, oh no, I'm not going to say that. She's still around. She's still alive. No, I'm not going to say that. I, I'm not going to say that about her. Let's just say I disagree with your influence toward my idols. In, well, towards a handful of my idols. George Harrison was pretty cool. So was Paul. And that's about it.
Okay, Lennon was good. Uh, John Lennon was, was decent enough. He, uh, like, my only disagreement is with how he pretty much took credit for everything the Beatles ever did, even though Paul McCartney was, ta was the talented one. Man, I'm never going to see that man in concert, and it upsets me. And the reason why I'm not is because his con is not because he's not coming back to Utah. He may, but his shows are just so goddamn expensive. I think the back row seat was like ninety dollars the last time he came to Utah, and it was at a local like. It was like a, a real suburban place, like Murray, where he showed up, which is weird, because usually big artists like that, they usually show up in uh, the USANA or Saltair. Really, really, well, well, the Saltair isn't that big. It used to be a big place, but, you know, like, it was in the 50s. In fact, the Saltair is kind of, kind of probably one of the more iconic of places rather than just big. Like, it, it was big at one time, but now it's just iconic, because that's where Carnival of Souls was made. The, oh, the most popular, uh, probably the, the most popular, like, movie ever made in Utah, next, uh, maybe with the exception of, um, oh, what is it called? Uh, uh, SLC Punk, that was it. And you know, the punk scene in Utah is very interesting. Because it's there. It, it is. Like, the MSI tickets fucking sold like hotcakes when they were here. And you know, MSI is pretty much like New Age punk, or... I, I don't know how to describe it. Because, you know, no matter how I describe it, somebody's gonna get upset. Because that's, that's the world that we live in now. And... Did I, did I make two? Oh, I made three. Even better. I just really want to get rid of these guys. It's it's a shame because, like, whenever we get some good... Sh like, like okay, I haven't seen Salt Lake I, SLC Punk, to be fair, but I enjoyed Carnival of Souls. Like, it was one of those, like, old-budget, like, early 60s flicks. I think it was made in 64. And it was... I, it was very reminiscent of... Uh, of German impressionism and the the makeup in that thing it, it was it was very charming like just I, I wouldn't call it like a fantastic film I'd say it's a cult classic god god it's like I this is, I'm going through like telltale heart shit right now with these fucking creatures anywho um now I'm beginning to wonder if it's above me you better not be above me, like, like, alien style. Um, but no, I haven't seen SLC Punk, but, you know, Car Carnival of Souls is good. It's a good movie. It's not a good movie. But, you know, it's like, hey, that's a good one. I enjoyed it. And to be honest, like, when I was watching Carnival of Souls, I had no idea that it was filmed in Saltaire. I just thought it was a place that happened to look an awful lot like the Saltaire. Like, I've only been to one show there, and that was My Chemical Romance. Aha! Aha! Sakius! You couldn't hide for long. No well, actually, it was a long time. So, yeah. Ah! There's another one! Sakis! Monsieur Oh, another one! They're spawning! And they keep on spawning, spawning, spawn. Mother. Motherfucker! Fucking fuck off. Thank you. Oh, Jesus Christ, really? How many of your brothers and sisters you got living with you? What the fuck? Is that the last? <laughs> it's not the last of them, unfortunately. But at least I took care of some of the hissing. Oh boy, that was irritating. Oh man, I, I, <laughs> these guys are making me sweat. And it's hot in my room. 
and I can smell it because I didn't put on deodorant. Oh, like I never do. Oh, because I'm a nerd playing Minecraft for YouTube. Man, like, I mean, to be fair, this isn't my main thing, and thank God it's not. I would just be miserable. Like, you know, I produce some original content. Like, some of my content is genuine, at least. Of course, like, I came in way too late on the Minecraft train, so it would seem. Because it's like, the the Minecraft train was there for, for a while. But then it's like, once... I like, that, as far as YouTube goes, that's, that was the case. But then Twitch came out as the biggest fucking thing in the world. And not that I'm dogging on, on Twitch, by all means, I love Twitch. But it's like, then it's like, no, no more episodes of Minecraft, just full-on streams. And I need, to, I need to play around with streams for a bit, because I, like, I feel like I'd enjoy streaming for the most part. Like, I, I do prattle on for quite a, uh, quite a long time about nothing, so, I uh, I feel like a, a lot could be, uh, a lot of good can be done there. But, you know, that's for a different time, that's for a different me. Ah, uh, shit. Mm. Well, you know, since I already got there to begin with, let's just keep, keep on digging through here, through this area, because I couldn't couldn't find my way, find my way back, find my way back to the hell. Oh man, I'm so glad I got to see Starship in concert, because I'm sure as shit never going to be able to see them again. Christ, their fucking singer. I'm shocked as to how he fucking managed to preserve his fucking voice. Like, holy shit, that guy can sing. That fucking... Damn, and, and you know he he like he he was starting to look a bit like the crypt keeper on stage, and no no he he if you, if you close your eyes it's like nah, he's 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 the same old self. Dude sings like a lady, and that's not a problem. That is actually kind of cool, cause that is also what Freddie Mercury and everybody did. Like, man, Freddie's, even though, like, you listen to Freddie in concert, and I'm going to be honest, like, even though you can hear the takes in his voice, like, obviously you can't hear him in live anymore, because he's not live. Um, uh, it's been a while. I can, I can get away with saying it. But, no, it's a terrible way that he died. Uh, but, um... Like, you could sort of hear sort of nasally pitch in his voice, and it wasn't quite as deep or, dare I say, fresh as the many takes that he did on album. And, you know, like, I, I still say that it that he was, that they performed great, because it's like, I look at the, you, you see old photos and, like, some uh, video footage of their old concerts, and it's like, Dude, these guys seem so cool. Like Brian Mayer, I think his name is the, or is it Brian Eno? No, it's not Brian Eno. I'm pretty confident it's not Brian e Eno. I'm pretty sure it's Brian Meyer, or Mayer, or maybe I'm confusing the two. Um, anywho, he like the guitarist. Like he was just a fun-loving dude. Like everybody was having fun at the at those concerts. Like. That's one thing you can't deny upon looking back at that footage. And, you know, Freddie, good old Freddie is singing his heart out. And God bless him and his mustache. <laughs> his mustache was so charming. He, he was an adorable boy. Yes, he was. But, eh, uh, God. I already explained on my Me Metal Gear Revengeance playthrough that I went to go see KRS-One in concert. And I'm going to repeat what I said in that in that uh, LP, just in case nobody bothers, or you're just stopping by to say hi. In which case, like, really, you're going to wait to leave in like half an hour into a single episode? Like, I believe that that ship sailed. You might as well go the whole three quarters, oh, at least. But yeah, no, 
we went to go see KRS in concert, and w the doors opened at 8, and the show didn't stop, I didn't start until 9, uh, until 9.30. So we're waiting around in that place for an hour and a fucking half, and I was depending on the train system at the time, because... My car's battery had died, and so it's like, all right, let's go, come on, and then the, the lights start going up, it's like, yeah, and, you know, the roadies are doing their thing, we're getting real hype because they're testing the microphones, and then, and then it turns out, hey, there's an opening act. I mean, of course, there is an opening act. And it's like, okay, that's cool. And then another one. Okay. And then another half hour break. Okay. And then another one. And it's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and they're all a bunch of fucking honkies, too. And it's like, can we please get to KRS? I want to hear the sound of the police live. He knows. He knows that's what they want. Fucking shit. I wish I could have seen it. I'll probably just look up some live footage, but it will it will break my heart. It'll break my fucking heart seeing that footage. Because I really wanted to go there. I really wanted to see him. But I had to fucking leave. Because the last bus, uh, the last train, excuse me, was going to leave before, before, like, I checked the bus schedule, and they said in at least 15 minutes, KRS-1 will be on stage, and I'm just like, hey, he's going to get on stage as soon as the train leaves the station. And I have to, and it takes me a good seven minutes or so to get the station. Well, better start walking. It, it, it was so heartbreaking, you guys. Oh, it's so heartbreaking. I hate it. I hate that. Someone's been in my room. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So, yeah, I'm not too, too thrilled. Unless somebody really special shows up. Oh, hey, how's it going, big boy? Hey, it looks like I've been here before, and that's a, that's a good thing because, like, I can just loop around that way. Hopefully. There's a possibility of it. Let's make sure there's no creeps. Doesn't look like there's any creepy creeps. At least not for a while. Knock on some wood. That was more of a tap, but, you know, let's hope fate and luck, lady luck doesn't care. It's like, whatever, I'm on break! Lady Luck does not like me, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you why. And that KRS-1 concert is a clear fucking sign of that shit. Like, okay, you know, I was, oh, Lady Luck, I warned you. I warned you about how Lady Luck feels about me. Oh god, that scared me. I was like, is there another one nearby? Because they usually show up in numbers, and I don't like it. I don't care for that aspect to them. Oh, oh, this is, this is, okay, no, I remember this place, okay. Yeah, that works, that'll do, that'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. You defeated the sandwich today, for now. And then Babe Pig in the City came out, and it's like, what is, what the fuck is this movie? Like, what the shit? Where's my farm? I mean, obviously, like, when you walk into a movie called Babe in the Pig City, uh, Babe Pig in the Pig City. Oh, man, that's a new one. That, that's going to be the next, uh, somebody call Hollywood. I got a new pitch for them. Babe 3. <laughs> uh, they wouldn't go for that. Babe Pig in the City didn't meet anywhere near its projected mark markings because it was marketed so fucking weird like i think the only place that i saw advertising for it was in my cover it, it like was in the previews for uh happily ever after that not disney funded pseudo disney flick 
with the dwarfettes or dwarf elves. Dwarfels? I I'm I'm looking that up. I, I need to figure out what the fuck. I need to figure out what it what that is. Who that is. See ya be, be chill on that. Alright, let's see. Go on to IMDB. And one day my, my phone will load. And yeah, I promised you Minecraft, but we're doing this shit now, okay? Okay. Wait, no, no, no. Not once upon a time. Happily. There it is. In 1990. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That guy was fucking blue. The... the and Snow White was 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 white, but she was voiced by a black person. It's like, I mean, that that's going to be a bit tri Oh, that's right, Dom DeLuise was the fucking Zsa Zsa Gabor was in it. Ah, let's see, what are they called? Oh, I, I want to get to the thing where, I mean, I was going to say it's like, you know, on one, I was going to ask, <laughs> I was about to ask. Why can't Snow White be black? And then it's just like, well, well. <laughs> okay, it, they referred to the dwarf cousins. But they referred to themselves as dwarfettes or dwarf elves. I remember that. And then there was the owl. Where's the bat? Where's the fucking bat? The bat isn't listed. Malcolm McDowell was Lord Malice? Oh. Okay. That was, that's that's neat. Is Ma is Malcolm still alive? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's holding it down. He's making that money. Big bank, big shack. Uh, yeah. That that was the term. I was I was like Big Mac, and it's just like no, that's a food. Oh God! I'm remembering this movie. I gotta stop looking at screenshots. I gotta, I gotta stop. All right, so the dwarf, the dwarves' cousins is what we'll call them now. Even though I'm confident that they were either dwarfettes or dwarf elves. Because when I was a kid, I heard dwarf elves, like, as in dwarves, as in dwarvish elf mixes. And then it's like my cousin also watched that movie. And just said, no, it's Dwarfettes. And I'm just like, no. And he's just like, yeah. And we never, and it was pretty much just his word against mine as to what they were called. And to this day, clearly, I, I still didn't, uh, I, I still didn't, uh, like, no one will know the answer. No one will know the answer. Unless, like, we get the original... Yo, can we get... <laughs> just, just let's start going to conventions saying, yo, you got the original script for Happily Ever After. And then they're like, you mean, you mean like, Princess Diaries 2? And then they're like, no! No! I'm talking about the fucking movie with the... That was with Snow White! That was Snow White! It was not made by Disney. Then who was it made by? It was not made by Disney. Just give me that one. And everybody's like, and they're like, no, get away or I'll call the police. Because this is my esteemed first edition copy. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine, like, just somebody keeping a sealed copy of just some movie that, like, cashed in? on a fucking decades old movie. It's like this is my preserved copy of I of a Christmas story 2. <laughs> oh, the world is trash. The world is trash. That's That's why that's 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 Oh my good lord. Ooh. Who said, yeah, I'll invest in that? Like, <laughs> God. Who pointed at this and said, yeah, it'll make money, like the first one did, even though it didn't. It just got a fucking cult following. Like, that's why they don't make a fucking, uh... 
That's why they don't make a, a fucking repo the Genetic Opera 2. Is because it didn't do anything for the bank despite its fucking its fucking cult following. Like it, it was a bad idea and I don't think I I'm pretty sure me saying that is in the no shit category. Then again, we live in a weird world where up is down and black is left. So I search me, maybe some people actually love the idea of of a Christmas story too. You know, even though like the kid is a fucking adult and said no to the movie because no shit. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> fucking Daniel Stern was in that movie. Like I, I was I'm I'm wondering whatever happened to Daniel Stern. Like did did he do something bad? Is that why his career fell down? Or was he just easily typecast as a result of uh, Home Alone? And that ended up killing his career. I don't know. It, it was sort of like how fucking Michael Keaton got lost after... Well, after Beetlejuice? Uh, after Batman Returns. And fucking Tim Burton's all like, Hey, hey man, I love you. Get the fuck out of here. And, you know, like he did with Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter. Man, Tim Burton's a weird one. Like, I appreciate what he did, bringing back the aesthetics of German Impressionism when we, uh, when it was pretty much a lost art form at the time. Like, everything was, everything even close was new gothic. Like, and, and you know, it's hard to differentiate the difference between German Impressionism and, uh, Actually, I think it was Expressionism that I'm referring to. One or the other. Some kind of Eschenism. I, of Prussianism. And, no, that's not what I want to do. Um, like, unless you actually take, uh, take any classes in film, you probably won't recognize the difference. So, let me, let me give you a lesson. Take a little minute. Just sit right there. And I'll talk to you about German... Impressionism, German films in the uh, in the pre-Hitler years, where it's just like, okay, so New Gothic is effectively the style of um, it, it's it's more akin to the style of um, of English filmmaking, where it's more about solid colors, it's more about aesthetic consistency. Uh, once, once, you know, once, uh, um, what's his name? Citizen Kane, motherfucker. Orson Welles came on the scene. It's like, we gotta get rid of all these shadows that don't, don't cooperate with, we gotta get rid of all these fake shadows and these, uh, these images that are designed to be war warped in, in the mindset, even though they don't really, even though, like, even though they have some gr ground in reality, it's like, I, I don't know, I guess it was considered, I guess you can call it a little too uncanny. And it's like, we've got to have something darker that's not as, that's not quite as stylistic and more horror as a focus rather than an aesthetic. And that's why you've got all these, like, these castles with, like, very basic s styles and what have you, and I like like um, fucking the immediate the immediate uh, example that comes across in my mind is the let's see it was a Vincent Price movie it was like in the early seventies I think it was it was based off of Edgar Allan Poe it wasn't uh, Tale Tale Heart. It wasn't uh, the pendulum, though. That I think that's a good example of of new gothic uh, aesthetic. Um, uh, it was like it was like that they it was like that fucking Edgar Allan Poe shit where he's just like, "Yo, check out this this place with colors and colors nifty." 
And it's just like, hey, you're a pretty terrible poet. And he's like, shut up. I'm doing my best. I watched my family drown their own blood. And it's just like, all right, all right, sheesh. Sheesh, man, take it easy. Oh, I'm sorry, take it easy. I'll tell you what. I didn't vote for that guy. I didn't vote for him. They just made me do it. Like, okay, so that was an interest. I, I just brought up something that amuses me. Back in the day, like, when, when voting laws were even l looser, like, when basically, like, you didn't have to register to vote. You just basically show up at a place. And, like, I believe that the way that it worked, and someone is more welcome to correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, they took a picture of you or wrote down your name and a general description of you. And it's like, there, that's how you, that's how we know that you're, that you didn't vote multiple times. And, uh, some people eventually took advantage of the fact. And so what they would do is that they would get these fucked up people, like these people who are all fucked up. And they say, all right, we're going to, we're going to, like, change, change you up a little bit. We're going to, like, I don't know, shave off your facial hair, change your clothes. Uh, here, we're going to give you a name tag and a voting ballot, and you'll vote for this person. And we'll pay you a little bit of money. And, yeah, obviously, most of the time they'd get away with it, because mostly they'd go for scoundrels. And fucking Edgar Allan Poe was a fucking scoundrel. He was a drunk fucking bastard. Once again, I don't blame him, because he watched his entire family giant in their, old, in their own blood. And then he was ostracized for wanting to bang his 14-year-old cousin. Which, at the time, like, of course, like, I'm no defender of pedophilia by all means. Uh, but then again, my grandma was 14 when she got married to my grandpa, so... Uh, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. Anywho. Um, like, he's like, I don't agree with it, but pff, here I am. She doesn't seem much worse for wear, but blah, blah, blah. not justified. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like the reason why he was ostracized was because at the time that he was alive, that's when that sort of thing was becoming less and less accepted. It was, it was sort of like, um, God, I'm trying to think of an example of just a, a recent example of a certain frame of discourse that has gotten distasteful. Uh, saying the, uh, the, the F word that, you know, is meant for people of the LGBTQ plus, uh, uh, community. You know the one. And, you know, that was, that was, a, that has ultimately been, been looked down upon in a matter of years. And, yeah, that's pretty much what happened to to banging 14-year-olds, as well as your cousins. And I, at least that's what I understand from what I was I told in my film class. Yeah, we had a film class that was talking about Edgar Allan Poe because that's where we watched that one movie with Vincent Price, the one with the, the multicolored rooms. Hey, colors, am I right? That's what Edgar Allan Poe said. He was like, yo, these colors are weird. Why are normal colors fucking weird? It's just like, they're not weird, you're just making them weird. Go drink again. Go go back to your drinky drink. He's just like, okay. Glug, glug, that poor man. <laughs> no, it's interesting to talk about like what is and what isn't politically acceptable. And it's like, it's interesting to observe how much, like, how much time takes place between when something becomes acceptable to unacceptable. Because it's like, let's take a look at fucking slavery. Like, like, okay, like, obviously, not defending. Obviously, for fuck's sake, no. No slavery, no ethnostates, none of that shit. Um... Now, the, like, of course, 
by the time that America outlawed it, it's like the rest of the world was already like, wow, you still do that? You still, I mean, as far as the first world goes, as far as the modern world goes, they're like, Jesus, that's fucked up. Why are you, why are you still doing this? And the uh, American capitalists are like, shut up, it pays the bills real good. And like, well, you know, tisk tisk, but whatever, we've got our own shit to deal with. And like, it, I, I, I love bringing up the aspect of, uh, mm, should I head up now? Let's see, what time is it? No, I should not, because it is the middle of the night up there. The children of the night. Man, that was such a good fucking uh, video. I'm, get, I'm getting off topic. But it's like, like there were like a, a good consensus around the people at the time of the outlaw that they said, yeah, all right, maybe we should back off the slavery thing. And you know what? That's uh, like... But they weren't all abolitionists. I believe that's what they were called, the ones who outlawed slavery. The ones who were like, do, do the thing right now. And, you know, of course, there were plenty of people who were completely against the, the lack of slaves. Because it's like, how am I supposed to feed my family that whole song and dance? I, uh, how, how am I supposed to keep my 29 horses bed without my slaves but anywho uh, I'm getting off topic here um as I always do and so what was I saying fuck um there, there were several different kinds of thoughts about that uh, about like the abol uh, among the abolitionists it's like how should we do this thing and of course it ended up being just right now Let's just get get this fucking slavery business over with. Because it's, it's like, like even fuck Abe, Abe Lincoln, like, they didn't have the term at the time, but he was pretty pro-ethnostate. Like, and people don't like talking about it. Like, he, he, he's gone on record to say, yo, whites are the superior race. And that's a quote by him. He, he just fucking says that, except minus the yo. At least I think so. <laughs> Uh, let's go, let's droop, drop, uh, yeah, uh, light, light my way, and, uh, okay, good, I have my bucket of water, but no, he was totally pro-ethnostate as far as, like, records suggest, like, his quotations, and, um, more to my point, it's like, mo and obviously, most of the people were like, get rid of the slavery now, and Lincoln's like, yo, you got it, ethnostate, here we come. And then, it, like, it, it was a good thing that they got rid of slavery, obviously. Now, god damn it, I will sing that to the heavens. The uh, comment that I will make is that I agree with some of the... <sighs> more, I'm going to put it, like, the more, oh, uh, how do I put this so tamely? Um, oh. what? What? Oh, okay, then, that's fine. Um, but, okay, here, here I go. The, the, other abolitionist, the other, I'm going to call them diet abolitionists. I'm inclined to agree with them, where it's like, we should abolish slavery. However, once these slaves are free, they will have nothing. And that is a problem, because A... You'll have fucking, you'll have fucking slaves who, uh, you'll, former slaves, excuse me. Uh, you'll have citizens, effectively, who are ultimately living on nothing. Uh, well, I'm getting rid of that. Um, 
who are ultimately living on nothing, and that will be bad for them. And they'll end up just working for lesser wages and not being able to provide for themselves. So and, uh, one of the proposals announced was, all right, let's hold off on the ab 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 abolishment of slavery, okay? And while we do that, we gather up a whole bunch of money so that we can effectively give these people, these former slaves, enough of a living to, you know, like, not die or starve or, or like, yeah, just general, just let's not let them, let's not just throw them out into the world and say, oh, okay, go. Because, you know, like, not only is their lack of wealth, like, a huge problem, but it's going to be a problem for the people around them, for, uh, and it's going to just tank our economy. We're going to take a huge hit. Everybody is. So let's just gather up all the money, and when we're ready, we can give it to them. And... Abraham Lincoln and all the other diehard abolitionists were like, No! No! Get them out of the fucking farms! Get them out of the fucking farms! Get... Just make them go. Just, just you know... Just kick them out into the world. Just out with the bathwater. Let's go. And... It, like, they would have also had problems like... Like, especially being former slaves, it's like, what could they do with a lack of education, especially public education, because there was none at the time. And, like, that's a fun fact. We are really, like, a lot of millennials and Gen Xers are really unaware and rather, and rather unappreciative of the public schooling system. Even though it's only been around for, like, maybe a, a century at most? Actually, no. It started post-World War II, I believe. Or, or post-World War I. One, one or the other. So it may be just a little under a century. Do you know how fucking young a government program is in order... In, in that sort of... Uh, line in, in, in uh, comparatively to most government platforms it's like how do we accomplish how do we accomplish that how do we accomplish such a national feat as for ed national education for public education how do we accomplish that it's amazing it's a very amazing thing that we're managing to educate people to the point to where illiteracy is considered illiteracy is considered ultimately destroyed it's ultimately gone as far as American and other first world society goes. And that used to not be the case. That wasn't the case in, say, my great-great-grandpa's, like, like early years. Or his, or his like, mid-years. Like, it's so new. And it's so incredible. It shows you the power that the government can have when it comes to, to public programming. And that's why I disagree with... Uh, with opposition to taxes. It's be and don't get me wrong, taxes can be dreadful. They can be unfair. They can be brutalizing. They can be absolutely unnecessary. But still, once you get a proper tax for a proper thing, once a program works, it's amazing. It's amazing what I'll do for your country, for the people around you, for you. Like Christ, and like you know, pub and public education is taking a hit right now, and it's a fucking shame. It fucks it, fucking what's what's her name, Betsy DeVos, and the guy who was like before her, who was in Obama's, Arnie Duncan, like all trying to privatize schools. Meanwhile, the schools are obviously getting worse and worse because they keep wanting to push into the private sector through charters and otherwise getting rid of the common core and you know i was initially against common core until somebody explained until like a 
a professor taught, uh, told me about it, in which he said, Common Core is strictly in regard to the basics. Common Core means that it is generally focused around conceptual, like, conceptual things. Like, there's, uh, like, it, it's the bare minimum, effectively. Common Core is a bare minimum. That's why it's called a core. It's not like a Marine Core. Where it's the own where it's where its word is law. It just means this is going to be a template for for education. And it's like when they're when you're trying to get rid of the common core, like once again, like the guy said it's, it, it's just the and I wish I knew what his name was so I could source the quote, but he effect he, he effectively said that it's stupid to believe, uh, it's stupid and foolish to believe that one person and that a, a family or a, a anyone in your state doesn't deserve, the uh, isn't capable of handling the quality, the bare minimum quality of education of any other state, uh, of Vermont or Kentucky it's foolish to believe that, as far as public spheres, public spheres concerned. Honestly, I think that charter schools should be done out with, and obviously that's a that's a big that's a big controversial issue. So I I won't push it, but it's it's just a thing of mine. And the reason why I say and the reason why I believe that is simply because I believe that no school should should consist of any public funding without having to follow public effect uh, well how, having to completely like i guess uh, automata automize uh, without fully integrating itself into the public sphere if you like anything that that anything that gets tax cuts and ta and is able to receive tax funding shouldn't be exempt from anything else that takes tax funding no matter how much of a percentage that it takes. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it off right here. Uh, I'm considering dropping the series, to be honest. But, you know, I like gabbing for an hour over nothing, and this game is a good way to do it. Maybe I'll just go ahead and switch to another game. Maybe? I don't, I don't know. I'll, I'll save that for next time. Stay wild! <laughs>